want a ballpup. You want futuristic. You don't want to spend a fortune. And you want to be different. Well, you may well like this week's offering. and welcome to AAR on Air. You know, there was a time when all the latest things had to begin with the letter Z. Or as our cousins across the pond refer to it as Z. The villains always had the name starting with Z. The baddie in Toy Story was Emperor Zerg. Gary Oldman played the baddie in The Fifth Element as Zerg. The list goes on and on. So when I picked up the latest ballpup from Effecto Airguns and saw it was called the Zeon, I just had to dig a little deeper. Well, it seems it's been used a few times. It is apparently a fictional place in an anime series. The owning company of Ingersoll Watches and a character in Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Whatever that is. In Greek, it refers to the boiling water added to a chalice by the priest. <sighs> but if anybody wants to enlighten me, I would appreciate your help. Anyway, that's what it's called. Is it any good? Let's take a look, shall we? Stats first. It is 790 millimetres or 31.1 inches long and tops the scales on a more heavyweight side of 4 kilograms. It is available in 177, 22 and 25 calibres and with its 275cc air tank, Effecto quote, 130 shots in 177, 50 in 22 and 35 shots in 0.25. But these figures are quoted with feet per second of around 820 to 880 in all calibres. So basically they are more FAC type power level figures than sub 12 foot pound. So in the UK they should give much higher shot counts than that. From the front then, there is the end of the Lothar Walther barrel, which doesn't come supplied with any form of silencer, but is shrouded. And it does a reasonable job of keeping the noise down. But this is fitted with a standard half inch UNF thread to add a silencer of your choice. And with a half decent silencer fitted, it is really very quiet, which should keep you in good books with the neighbours and the other half probably. Below this is that 275cc air tube with manometer fitted to the end. This is an Effecto labelled item and colour coded with white, amber, green, amber, then red. This would seem to indicate that not only does it have a maximum fill pressure of 240 bar, but there would seem to be the green zone, which must be its sweet spot, which is up to a maximum of 200 bar. During all my testing, I kept it within this green zone and found it to be very consistent. Behind this gauge is the filler port with a very defined click twist, dust cover. Nothing loose and sloppy there, which gives you that feel that it's been engineered. Below this is the plastic stock. And yes, I said plastic. They state this in the manual and don't use the word polymer anywhere. Now this is the all black version. And then there is the coyote version that would appear to be part plastic and part wood at first glance of a photograph. But this is simply two-tone plastic. I must say the quality of the finish of the stock is pretty good. There are no sharp joints anywhere. There is some funky stippling to the forestock and lighter stippling to the grip. There is an adjustable weaver rail under the front for bipods and the like. 
or whatever takes your fancy. I must say this is quite a futuristic looking stock with lots of angles going off all over the place to give it a very modern style. It feels robust and capable of taking a few knocks in the field. The rear butt pad is rubberized and the cheek piece, well, that's interchangeable. And there are three options supplied in the case. Yes, it comes with a semi-hard case, which bears more than a passing resemblance to a carpet bag from the Wild West, but it is foam filled with pre-cut sections and feels like it'll do a pretty good job of protecting your new pride and joy. There is even a removable section in there for when you add your scope. In the case, you also get your filler probe, spare o-rings and two daystate magazines at which point your ears have pricked up at the word daystate don't worry i'll come back to that later back to the bullpup on the top is a long forward pointing weaver rail for your external sighting choice the framework holding this is also very futuristic with the word Xeon on the right hand side and a pretty smooth side action lever on the left side. Now this isn't interchangeable, but no deal breaker. To the rear of the magazine loading area, it's embossed with the brand name Effecto. The trigger is a two stage item and is adjustable. But to do this, you will need to take the stock off the gun itself, rather than a simple long hex key through the trigger guard. That said, the trigger was really good straight out of the box. The safety. Well, I read in the book this was Manuel. Now, at this point, I couldn't get a Siberian hamster out of my head, but it seems this is a simple typo. Now, finding the Manuel safety was the next task. This is tucked away in the base of the stock. Now, this may or may not be a good thing. You see, if you're wanting to use your trigger hand to engage or disengage a, a safety, and you're likely to have a bit of an issue. But if you use your other hand, then it is a very simple task with a click forward for safe and a pull back for fire with red or white indicators showing. Irrespective of caliber, they all come with two 10 round magazines. Now earlier I said Daystate magazines. Naturally they aren't, but if you've owned a Daystate then these will be hugely familiar. They do feel exceptionally high quality and are built of heavier gauge metals. There is a red dot that hits you first. This is the 11th chamber, so to speak, and blocks the probe so you have a lock open after last shot situation with the side lever, something the Daystate version didn't have. Loading this is so simple, just drop in and turn. until all chambers are full. Now I know Daystate have changed some of their magazines, but you get my drift if you've used Daystates before. I would say if you remove the small screw in the bottom and drop it in the opposite side, you will be able to change the loading from left to right over to right to left. Hmm, nice idea. So, what about power levels? This is the 177 calibre version. So, loaded up with 8.44 grains, it saw a maximum of 787 feet per second, which is 11.61 foot-pounds or 15.74 joules. It's worth putting some heavier 10.34 grains in, I think. With these on board, it saw 719 feet per second, which is 11.87 foot-pounds 
or 16.1 joules, so more than enough for a spot of light pest control. The only thing to do now is add a scope and get the matching cheek rest to get the most comfortable position. Then get it out over the range. 40 metres should be a good test distance. Put a Veyron on this one, makes it nice and compact. Hmm. Here we go. Oh. Effecto Xeon. <laughs> right, I'll let you into a little secret. Yesterday I fired this gun for the first time and those were the results. It was amazing. Really accurate, 40 metres, down range, pretty much second magazine. First one to zero in, second one actually did that. All touching, if not through the same hole. But the camera didn't record it. So, in the interest of being honest, I'm going to have another go. But it's even colder today. Nice sunny day, but even colder. So, I've got to hope I can replicate those results. Here goes. And I'm shaking because I'm cold. Same hole. Me now going off. Full magazine, apart from one that went down, all touching again. I can improve that. I have done better than that. It's just... It's a Turkish gun. It's a little on the heavy side, as they often are there. But you cannot fault the accuracy of this. It's got a Lothar Walther barrel in it. So at least I've had a good sense to buy in some decent quality barrels. Shooting that without a silencer on. It's not that loud. Put a silencer on it, you can't hear it. Yeah. Ooh, my fingers are blue. I'm pleased with those results. I know it can do better. It's one of those guns you pick up and you think, this is accurate. This is going where I want it to go. And that is exactly what this is doing. It may not be everybody's cup of tea, but <laughs> you cannot fault its accuracy. You really can't fault its accuracy. Yeah, back to the studio, it's a lot warmer there. To be honest, I don't think there's anything to complain about there, at all. Nice, comfortable position. I suppose the price is the next question on everybody's lips. Well, whether you choose the Xeon or Xeon Coyote, they are both the same price, at around £770 UK, with the case, two magazines, cheat rests, etc. All you need to add is a scope, and a silencer if you prefer. It is very comfortable to shoot, maybe a little on the heavier side, but it carries that weight tight into the shoulder, as you would expect from a bullpup. The side lever is really very smooth, and the trigger is very comfortable. It is definitely different, and will have them talking down the range. It's not overpriced, but it's not really tight budget gun either but it is more than accurate enough and pretty substantially made hmm that's it 
Hopefully you've enjoyed this week's review. If you have, please give us the old thumbs up, subscribe, share and click the old alarm bell. Take a look at this little lot and of course is the AAR on our website. A big thanks to Vector Air for getting hold of these two for me to review. They just seem to pull something out of the bag every week. <laughs> Take a look at the new news channel. The link is here. Most of all, as always, a big thank you to you guys for watching and supporting what we try to do here on the channel. Stay safe and shoot safe. And hopefully, I'll see you next week. Bye for now.